name is Steve Stevens, the best sports consultant money can buy. I make more money betting sports than anybody in the world. I'm the one that tells you who to bet. I'm not a bookie, I'm the bookie killer. If money talks, then I got a lot to say. I'm on the grind trying to make a hundred thousand dollars a day. The game that I pick, believe me, it's a winner. What I know could get you rich, cause all I pick is winners. Welcome to Las Vegas. Money talks, money talks. Welcome to Las Vegas. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the VIP Sports Podcast. I'm Darren Notero, a.k.a. Steve Stevens, a.k.a. The Bookie Killer, sitting here with my co-host, my good partner, my good friend, my numero uno, The Big Skipper, a.k.a. The Chiropractor. Good morning, Skip. Just straightening people out, Steve, just cracking bones. Well, that's pretty much all you can do in our situation. I got some bad news, though. What, it's Groundhog's Day, you saw your shadow, and you got to take another six weeks off, or what? (laughs) How'd you know? Buddy, I can read you like a fucking book. Paparazzi, can can you turn me up a little bit in the headphones there, pal? I know we don't. Oh, there we go. Thanks, pal. I couldn't hear myself. You know me. Uh, I like to hear myself talk a lot. You know uh, what I mean? You're, you're a loud guy, and you do, you do like to hear yourself talk. Do I? Well, I can back up what I say. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. Let's back a little it up. bit different than everybody else. You let's, know what I mean? Let's back it up to the groundhog thing. You came out. You saw. You woke up this morning. You saw your shadow. You yeah. figured, fuck it. Another six <laughs> weeks later, I'm not coming in to work or what? Talk to me. Six more weeks of no work. Oh, my God. I love that fucking groundhog. I, I actually, well, it's a PA thing, brother. And uh, yeah. to be honest with you, uh, the old schoolness of it, I mean, what, what, where does that date back to? The 20s? The 30s? I don't How know. How far back? I mean, that's got to go time. early 1900s, uh, maybe even 18. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's like late 1800s. Because the, the way the talk about the groundhog, you know, it's well, like you, you see it's almost fucking, written in Jesus. You see the fucking hats they wear? They wear yeah, they wear the like, top hats. They wear like the Abraham Lincoln fucking I love hats. It. Yeah, and, I love it. And the long trench coats. And uh, it's a big deal. And uh, in Poxitawney, Pennsylvania, yeah. it's a big deal. As a matter of fact, they were saying the hotel room rates in Paxitawney, Pennsylvania, which is a small town, by the way. By the way, you got the biggest results this year than ever. The hotel... More people came to watch the, the Groundhog this year than oh, ever. It's a big deal. Right. They said the hotel rooms were like over 400 hours a night everywhere in that area. Mm-hmm. The hotels were more expensive than the hotels in Houston this weekend for the Super Bowl. Fuck, I believe it. Well, I tell you what... That, that's insane. It had me drawn in this morning. I had just hit the bong of a little Steve Stevens Master Closer Kush. I'm sitting up... <laughs> Just did some push-ups, looking around a little bit, sent the kids off to school, and uh-huh. uh, I was really drawn in by it. Uh-huh. And then Good Morning America came on right after and burst in my bubble and said they're full of shit and the groundhog don't mean shit and oh, kind of ruined morning. my whole experience. Oh, fuck Good Morning America. I was all pumped up, bro. What the hell do they know? And then Al Roker comes on and says it don't mean shit. What the fuck does Al Roker know about a groundhog? He knows how to lose weight and look like a troll. Well, he got his stomach tied up. <laughs> he, he does look like a troll. He looks, I, mean, I like him. I like him better fat. I do too. Well, he has a little gray tint to his body, which might be something wrong, but yeah. good guys, good people overweight. Anyway, it's Groundhog's Day, Skip. That comes yes. from your hometown. I, the tradition of it is absolutely cool. I loved it. Obviously, he came out and seen his shadow today. Yes, he did. Six more weeks of cold weather. So now it says, says there's another six weeks of uh, winter. Mm-hmm. On the opposite, it's February 2nd, 2017, out here in Las Vegas. Weather is absolutely gorgeous. It's 70 degrees out there. Today. You couldn't ask for anything more, Skip. Man, we Groundhog would definitely be running around partying out here. That is a fact. Super Bowl weekend. That groundhog would look like the would look like the groundhog on a uh, Caddyshack with Bill Murray. Oh, I'm um, all right. No, don't you? Worry oh about yeah. Me. You give that groundhog a little bit of that cush, that <laughs> motherfucker will start dapping, start doing everything. The groundhog should be out here for Super Bowl weekend. Oh, absolutely. I, I think that should be the def- the motto of the Super Bowl, huh? <laughs> Fuck Pennsylvania. Get that groundhog out here. Bring that ground... You know what? I wish we could have had that groundhog uh, paid to have him shipped here to see who we liked in the <laughs> Super Bowl. Yeah. Set up two bowls of food and see who that motherfucker chipped on first, huh? Yep. We'll have the groundhog start picking games. Holy... Well, I mean... And that brings me to my next segment because that's where our industry's going. It's getting to the point where <laughs> groundhogs can pick games better than... They got octopuses picking hockey games better than these so-called consultants. I know where, so, you're, I know where you're going with this. Before we get into our show today, ladies and gentlemen... I, myself, Steve Stevens, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Okay. I actually have a public service announcement I'd like to make today because uh, the sports consulting industry, as you know, I love it. I embrace it. We eat it. We live it. We love it. This is what we do for a living. But it's getting a little bit fucking ridiculous, Skip. It is. So can you give me a couple minutes to what... I came up with a segment here. 
It's called What Separates VIP Sports uh -huh. from Everybody Else. Who we are and who we're not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you guys facts. This is, this is not to hate on anybody. Uh, it's not to put down anyone in our industry. Anybody that's in our industry, I embrace you. But you can't act like you're doing what I do no. because you're misspeaking big time when you say that I do what Steve does. I'm actually the only company, we're the only company that actually does sports consulting the way it's supposed to be done or even as a company at all. So my public service announcement, Skip, I'd like to start off by saying uh, a few different things, if you don't mind. It's just really been bothering me. Mm -hmm. It's on my mind and it's, it's got to stop, okay? So what you're attempting to do here is to clarify the difference between Everyone out there that calls themselves a sports everybody that's on listen all these people are consultant and the difference between the, the us and them the oversaturated sports consulting industry because it's become oversaturated with people that have no idea what they're doing uh, we we did it there's over yeah. uh, seventy five thousand people on the internet on social media Facebook Twitter and Instagram that think they're sports consultants. So Guys that say they're selling games right. they have information on games mm -hmm. and know what they're doing. So the difference between them and us, the Michael Jordans of the industry. That is correct. So what I'm going to do by starting off in what separates us from everybody in the industry, Skip, number one is our sales force, okay? Everybody out there claims to uh, have a sales room and do this and do that, but yet we're the only sports consultant firm in the history uh, of sports betting on social media to actually post pictures of our sales force. We bring salesmen in here all the time. We run competitions. We actually show videos of our Thanksgiving parties, our Christmas parties, our celebrations. Uh, we, we post videos in our room showing people the 25 salesmen and pictures of our room of our salesmen that write millions of dollars a year, right? Yeah, in addition, we did a national, Hold on, no, no. Did, did a national television show showing everybody I'm going one step at a time, showing please. Showing everybody in the room. Let's yeah. just go to step one, We're, okay? We, we are one big family. Grab your checklist because these are the things that separate me from wannabe handicappers and guys they say they do what I do. Correct. Number one, on social media, Instagram, Facebook, um, you guys never show uh, any pictures of your sales force or any of your salesmen. Why? Because you don't have any. Because you're working in a, a one-bedroom apartment with, uh, if you're lucky, or, okay. a, or a motel. So what sep separates VIP sports, we actually have 25 salesmen dedicated to providing the best sports information available. We're licensed and bought in, in the state of Nevada, been in the same locations for 15 years. Nobody else is. Is that true? Can we move on? Yes, we can. Nobody has a sales force, and if they do, nobody posts pictures, and uh, everybody's full of shit. So uh, these guys out there that claim to have rooms, uh, guys that are on blogs claiming to have a sales force, if you don't have pictures of it on your Instagram, Facebook, you're a fraud. So that's what separates me from everybody else. You want to go to step two? Yeah, so just to recap real quick, licensed and bonded in the state of Nevada. Nobody else is. Uh, in the same location for over 14 years. Nobody else is. Uh, with a sales force of over 25 to 30 people at all times. Which we show pictures of on our social media all the time. Yeah. We show our celebration, company, we show our company, award summer. Company parties, Christmas parties, okay. Thanksgiving parties. So we actually... We're, we're one big family. To show the people that we actually are who we say we're you are. We're actually a legitimate business. A legitimate business. Nobody else is. Correct. Nobody else has a room, Skip. Nobody. No. Well, if they are, they got three people. Okay, but nobody has it. And if they are, no one's showing it on social media. So that separates us from everybody else, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, the other thing that separates us is how come none of these companies ever show pictures of them with the clients that they say they have and make money for? Good point. I'm the only sports consultant in the history of sports betting that actually shows you in Las Vegas pictures of me and my current clients mm -hmm. making five and six figure bets at the casino. We actually show pictures on our Instagram yes. of you, I, and the client at Caesars Palace. Mm -hmm. We show a picture of the ticket that they bet for fifty or hundred thousand. Right. Then we show a picture of us celebrating with that client. Correct? That is absolutely correct. Nobody else does. Not that I'm aware of. Show me another sports consultant on the internet that uh, has pictures of them with their clients in Las Vegas at the sports book betting, making money with their clients giving a testimonial about how much money they make. And not just one or two, one after another, hundreds, after another, after hundreds, another, after hundreds another. and hundreds. Had the yeah. competition skip? Zero. Zero. I'm, I'm calling you guys out. So check that off your list. No other sports services on their social media or on their website has any pictures of real clients. In the real casino. In Las Vegas, betting, in a real casino, betting, real betting money. money with yeah. them themselves. Yeah taking pictures and showing proof and results of what they say they do. With the owner of the company and the top dog hanging out and partying with them and celebrating with them. Nobody else, nobody, period. Nobody does that. Okay, so doesn't that make you scratch your head, ladies and gentlemen? Hmm. Um, nobody else in the industry does it. 
I mean, um, you want to deal with a guy that stands behind social media and um, writes, like, there's bloggers out there that say this, they say that, they say this about VIP. There's guys out there that um, 99 out of 100 people that have a sports consultant website or Twitter or Instagram, all they do is post stats. Mm -hmm. There's no proof of them making money with their system. There's no pictures of them betting. Uh, there's no, and, and that's what makes me laugh. You got guys that run commercials on scores and odds, guys running down the strip in the morning. <sighs> the early bird gets the worm, guys. You got to get here at 6 a.m. Uh, to, to get in on the action. <laughs> I, this, got, I got your worm. This motherfucker, not only does he not live in Las Vegas, but he doesn't even bet sports himself. Right, but we're not trashing anybody. We're not here, we're to, not here to hurt we're anybody's not here to, feelings. We're, we're not here to hurt I'm anybody. just stating facts. Listen, right. ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 nobody compares to me and my company, period. I'm not bragging. I'm just stating facts. So far, you guys out there on the Internet and social media that uh, claim to be world-class handicappers, you don't bet sport. So here's pretty much what I'm getting to with my rant and rave. This is what separates VIP sports and the real companies. And what's up, little D? Is that some water for me? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Don't drink this one yet. Don't drink this one yet? I'm just telling everybody what separates Daddy and VIP Sports from all these other sports consultants, okay? Okay. I mean, we want to make sure that they're able to put their kids in Gorman in the finest schools and, and live very well and teach good grammar, okay? okay? I love you. Hey, you do like making money, correct, D? Yes or no? <laughs> I love you, buddy. I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right? So anyway, Skip, like I said, I'm not bragging, but we need to put a list what separates VIP sports and my company from everybody else. So here's a few things that separates VIP that no one in the world has. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's start from the beginning. Licensed and bonded in the state of Nevada. Same office for over 14 years. We have a $100,000 bond with the state of Nevada to be sports consultant. I'm third generation born and raised in Las Vegas. That's important. Uh, 14 years in the same location. I'm actually running the streets in Las Vegas, dealing with the guys that make the lines here in town. While we're talking about the 14 years in the same location, Steve, you might as well mention the fact that we get more walk-ins at our office than a hair salon does. That is correct. Yeah, people stop by here all the time. They're on vacation or they come into town on business. They stop by to say people walk. We have about five or six people that walk in our office every week. They're called walk-ins. We get more walk-ins than a hair salon, okay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, don't ever compare us to an outbound telemarketing room, guys that are begging people to take their free game, okay? Well, well most people, you can't even find their office because they don't really, they have, don't have, one. They don't really have one. It's, okay. in, it's in their garage. So number two, guys claim to have a big sales force. They claim to do what we do. They claim to be consulting, working with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis when these people don't even have a room. Mm -hmm. I'm the only sports consultant that has a room of 25 sports consultants dedicated to providing the best sports information, and we post it on the internet. Nobody else does. We got um, more, you got more money behind you than anybody in the business. I'm the only guy that shows celebrities and billionaires on my uh, social media as, as clients of mine. Mm -hmm. I, I, nobody else does. I'm the only person that shows five and six figure sports betting tickets. And nobody else does. If anybody else has tickets, 99% they're mine. Okay, and if somebody does have a big ticket or they bet every now and then, God bless them. I'm not putting anybody down. But that same guy can't show a picture of him and his clients in the sports book making money. Right. I'm the only sports consultant that has pictures and proof of my clients that I deal with on a one-on-one -on -one basis in Las Vegas, betting the games in a Las Vegas sports book with a picture of the ticket making money. You've got more money behind you than anybody in the business. <laughs> no one but else does. You've got more contacts than anybody in the business. Guys advertise. You've got more celebrity clients than anybody in the business. Yeah. we got clients not just in America. We don't just have walk-ins that come by the office. we got people all over the world. We're worldwide, nationwide. I'm the only sports consultant in the world that's nationwide. We get over 45 out-of-the-country leads and orders on our internet every single week. And there's guys out there in my industry that are doing their thing. There's guys that got websites that sign people up. They make money. Uh, their website sells orders. But buddy, let's make something clear. What your website does in a year, my company does in a week in business. And I'm not just putting you down. We deal with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We talk to them in person. 
can't ask a computer a question. Mm -hmm. Anyone can sign up for a $2,000 year with your shitty picks. That doesn't make them a better sports better. That's why we deal with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, work with them personally, show them the formula for success, which is money management and discipline. We got people in Ireland. We got people, <laughs> in, people in England. We got people in Germany. We got people, a lot of people in Australia. Here's the reason why I I'm mean, defending uh, myself, because guys advertise early birds get the worm. They advertise they're running on the strip in the morning. Uh, they got videos acting like they're in Las Vegas. These guys don't even bet sports. On their website and their Twitter, they don't even have a picture of them betting what they preach. They're giving you a system, but yet they don't bet it themselves. They're not in Las Vegas. They don't have any proofs of any clients doing it. Why the fuck are you people calling these idiots? When you see somebody on Twitter, you see somebody on Facebook, if they don't show pictures of their uh, winning tickets, if they don't show the clients and testimonial letters and videos of people betting in Las Vegas following their system, they're not real. Who in the world has more pictures with celebrities and, and, and athletes? These guys do not even live in Las Vegas and don't have a clue about anything to do with winning games and having inside information. Why would you put your hard-earned money uh, uh, after a guy uh, that you've worked so hard for, why would you put your hard-earned money when a guy on social media tells you that he's 15-0 and 0, or he's like VIP sports or he's the best in the world, why would you spend one dollar when the guy can't show you any proof of his system, doesn't have any clients, doesn't show any winning tickets, and doesn't have proof of anything that he's saying. It's getting a little fucking ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me just explain something to you right now. The reason why I do this podcast is because I'm the only person in the history of sports betting to be documented by the Business Financial Network, CNBC, for four years straight before we got on TV documented by the CNBC Business Financial Network as the best in the world. I'm 71.2% all year long and nobody else is, period. The reason why we did the podcast is because after the show was over, people loved coming into my life and our life of someone that bets big and lives larger. A guy that actually does what he says he does. A guy that lives in Las Vegas, drives Ferraris, feeds his family good, gambles, has a fucking sales force like a family. We party together. We live. We have good times. We have bad times. We have highs and lows, but we're a tight-knit family. So we did the podcast to support the legalization of sports betting because, after all, we want to give the legalization uh, the biggest boost we possibly can because sports betting needs to be legal in every city and state around the world. After all, there's going to be $4.9 billion bet on the Super Bowl and only about $150 million being bet in the United States here in Las Vegas. Why the fuck are we sending billions of dollars out of the country? That's why I do the VIP Sports Podcast, so they can build schools, tax it, and, and everybody can bet like they're doing already. Amen. President Obama's betting. Everybody's always, every, all these people are already betting. It's something that's going to happen anyway. Make it legitimate. I just am getting a little tired of the hundreds of thousands of guys or sports consultings that say they do what we do, Skip. So here's your checklist, which separates me from everybody else. I'm the only one in the history of, uh, of sports betting to have a primetime television show called CNBC called Money Talks, the only one in the history of sports betting, me. The only one that bets five and six figures of his own money and posts it on the internet. Uh, no one else does. I'm the only guy that brings clients into town actually bets with them, shows videos of me and the client in a Las Vegas sports book, making money, cashing the ticket, and party. Nobody else does. I'm the only guy documented at 71.3% in the world, winning and making money. Nobody else does. I'm the only guy that has a 25 to 30 man sales force that writes millions of dollars in business. No one else does. Let me ask you one question. Why the fuck would you be fooled by anybody on the internet, anybody on Facebook, anybody on Twitter that claims to be a world-class handicapper? If they're hiding behind social media and they don't have any evidence, if they're not licensed, licensed and bond in the state of Nevada, they haven't been consulting for years and years and years, why the fuck would you put your dick in a hole and not know what's on the other side? Why would you put, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it's absolutely getting to the point where it's ridiculous. I'm tired of you guys p wasting your money. Wake the fuck up. Don't go to a peep show. Come to the real deal. Wake the fuck up. 99 out of fucking 100 of these people on social media and internet are calling you from a one-bedroom apartment. They live in a Motel 6 in a budget suite, and they don't have a fucking clue about betting sports. They're not in Las Vegas. They don't bet games like themselves, and they give a motherfucker like me a bad name. So for all you guys in my industry that claim to be sports consultants and you guys pick games and you have a passion for it, keep it up, brother. 
keep the industry alive, have a passion for it, but don't ever let me catch you saying you do what I do because nobody does what I do. Hands fucking down, and I just wanted to straighten that out before we get into this show. I think you did. Okay, good. Well, anyway, because I'm tired of people spending their money. It's a billion-dollar industry. People are getting fooled every fucking day by these gimmicks. People are advertising in Ferraris, uh, saying, call this number. They're running on the strip. The last time they've been to the strip is when they filmed that commercial. Guy lives in New York or Wisconsin or whatever. <laughs> Don't be fooled by all the fucking smoke and mirrors. These guys are all full of shit. Uh, they claim to have systems, but yet they don't have any proof on their social media or their website with the system fucking working. So why are you sending them money? I'm the only guy that lives in Las Vegas that shows you my sales force, that shows you my tickets, that shows you my clients. I work directly with the guys that make the lines here in Las Vegas, and I make more money and deal with the biggest sports bettors in the world. So why the fuck? And please stop being fooled by all these other phonies. Fair enough? Fair enough. And for you guys out there that just say that you pick games and this, that, and the other, and you have a passion for it, keep your passion up. Like I said, in order for somebody to imitate success, someone has to be successful. That's me. Just makes me a little sick and fucking tired when I, 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 somebody walks up to me or I hear somebody say, this guy does what you do. I'm the only one in the history of this industry that does sports consultant the way it's supposed to be done and the only way it's supposed to be done and the only person that could do it. Reason why no one has a room at 25 people is because they can't. They don't have the connections. They don't have the salesmen. They don't have the leads. They don't have the power. They don't have the money. They don't have shit. Stop being fooled. Only thing I wanted to say, and that was my public service and outments. I swore I told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Got a great show for him today, Skip. You ready to get into it? Hell yeah. Like I said, man, we're kicking ass and taking names. It's the Super Bowl podcast, and I couldn't be more excited, my good friend. Woo. Before we get into the podcast, Skip, all the guys that are just following along, whether you've been with us from Money Talks, our TV show on CNBC, or whether you're just running into us on the internet through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, or YouTube. Shout out to YouTube. We love it. You guys have uh, taken care of us very well. The world of social media. You guys want to deal with the number one consultant. Our VIP sports podcast is all about the legalization of sports betting and to bring you into my life, a guy that bets big and lives larger and has proven. A guy that's been on television, the only guy on television, the best in the world, and I give you my attitude and what I think and experience on sports. I talk a lot of shit. Uh, we have fun. It's entertainment. Uh, but at the same time, we back it up. So for you new people that are just getting into sports betting, you want the formula for success, whether you've been doing it on your own and losing, doing it on your own and winning, or you just are starting to do the business for the first time, I can help you be a better sports better. I can make you more money. I can be that special seasoning in your sauce. All I want to do is add to your arsenal. If you're an Uzi, you're going to war and you got an Uzi and you're firing good, you can always use a tank. And that's what I'm here to do. So if these people want to start betting sports and start making money the right way, how can they get a hold of us, Skip? Well, you can call me Skip the Tank, Steve. Goddamn right. Skip the Skip Tank. Skip the Tank. Let's yeah. go, Skipper. Bring the fucking tank with you. How do they get a hold of us? You can give us a call. The easiest way to reach us so that you're not being in touch with all the trolls out there, like we've said before, to know that you're talking to us, just give us a call at 877-220-6540. It's the easiest way to get on the phone with me, one of the other guys, or if you're lucky, maybe even Steve. This is the last thing I'm going to rant about that I didn't say. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows when you watch our podcast, anybody knows when you subscribe to us or put a podcast in our social media, what do you guys get? Hundreds and hundreds of services want to be me, whether they're talking shit about me, whether they're imitating us, saying they are us, or whatever they have to say, everybody watches the Mecca and then solicits our clients. Mm -hmm. that's, that, 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 that's what I'm trying to say. Even if they're making up fake accounts, the whole nine yards. You know, it just makes me scared, sick how many fake people are out there claiming to do what we do. Nobody does what we do. So if you want to get a hold of us, 877-220-6540. That's how you know there's no trolls. If somebody says uh, or goes to my Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and puts, call Steve Stevens right now, that's not me. I only have one site. That's VIP Sports LV. VIP Sports Las Vegas, uh, VIP Sports LV, that's my Twitter. If you want to know it's us, call 877-220-6540. Or what else? If you're looking for a free pick, do what? You can go to our website. It's VIPSportsLasVegas.com. Las Vegas spelled out. VIPSportsLasVegas spelled out, dot com. There's a place on there you can put your phone number in. If you want to just try a free, uh, free pick, get your feet wet a little bit. Uh, there's also packages on there, Steve for all different shapes and sizes of sports bettors. Uh, if you want to purchase something on there, 
Uh, if you want to purchase something, give me a call so we can talk it over and I can put you in the right direction. It's as simple as that. Bottom line, you want to subscribe to the podcast. We're on YouTube, iTunes. We read all your comments. You guys, we love having fun with you guys. Like I said, the reason why we started this is because uh, it's all organic. We're all for the movement and legalization of sports, and we want to make you guys laugh. From what I say, what they say, we're pretty entertaining guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if I can make fun of Ariana Grande licking a cock and a donut in a donut shop, that's what I'm going to do. If I can tell you a player that's got lower back pain because he's been fucking too much, that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Our job is to report the sports, but more importantly, give you the inside information on how to be better sports betters. Right, Skip? That's correct. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at VIP Sports LV. You can direct message us with any questions. We love you. Skip, why don't you give a shout out to the people that keep our country safe? And here's another thing that I want to say as well. And for those of our people that are on Armed Force Radio Network, this is the other thing you don't understand. And to people out there, well, how come you only have 8,000 subscribers and only average 6,000 views? We don't advertise. Everything we do is organic. Here's another thing you guys don't understand. We're on Armed Force Radio Network, which goes to 3 million people. They're listening to it on Armed Force Radio Network. They don't have to listen to it on the VIP Sports Podcast, which... To our benefit is a little, we kind of take it in the ass a little bit. So why don't we just tell our people out there that listen to us on Armed Force Radio Network, make sure you subscribe to the VIP Sports Podcast because we can give you all sorts of other information and alerts of what's going on. There's tens of thousands of people listening to our show Mm -hmm. that are not listening to it through the podcast. Do you understand that? Yeah, through YouTube. Right. So I just, I want to make that clear right now. Shout out to all the military heroes out there, both men and women. Uh, We love you. We support you. Uh, we, hope, we know you're out there all over the world keeping this country safe and uh, protecting us from the bad guys. Uh, thank you for keeping us safe, bottom line. We salute each and every one of you. We're on the Armed Forces Radio Network every Friday morning at 11.30 uh, a.m. Pacific time and every Monday, twice a day, Steve, 6 in the morning, 6 in the evening. Uh, That's Pacific time every Monday. I'd like to say our Armed Force customer client uh, number has risen to 211 clients now with VIP Sports because of the fucking Armed Force Radio Network and everything you guys have done. Armed Force Radio Network, on the bottom of my heart, I love you. You guys are one of our first big sponsors. And like I said, I'm going to rep you guys till I die. Check us out Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Again on Monday, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Speaking of sponsors, want to give a shout out to our new sponsor, uh, Paperhead, as you know, Skip. For those sharp sports bettors wanting to make more cash, manage your players, and start your business with paperhead.com. Start making money, uh, real money, with the best sports money management software in the business, Skipper. Mm -hmm. Uh, Paperhead is secure. That's important. You want to be safe. User-friendly and built with the exclusive tools to maximize your profits quickly and easier. Quick and easy money, bro. I mean, uh, last time I checked, quick and easy money is what it's all about, right? Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's almost like sex. A quick and easy nut's the best route, right? (laughs) It can be, yeah. (laughs) At my age, it is, Skip. <laughs> Get the girl, grab the money, and run. You know what I mean? Uh, track lines from every professional and college sports league and get access to 24-hour support staff every day of the year, which, as you know, that's great. You have any questions, staff members on point, 24 hours a day. So if you're like me, Steve Stevens, and you bet big and you live larger, you can become your own boss today with Paperhead at Paperhead.com. Try it for free at Paperhead.com and get your piece of this billion, or should I say, trillion dollar industry. You deserve it, like I said, paperhead.com. And if you're watching or listening to VIP Sports Podcast, you have any type of business, offshore book, marijuana dispensary, opening up soon here in Las Vegas. They're on uh, every, they're every corner. You want to be a sponsor of the VIP Sports Podcast, you can catch our sales team at advertising at VIPSportsLasVegas.com. What, what do you say we get into our show today, Skipper? Let's get into the college basketball segment. What Why, well, first of all, it's our Super Bowl show. I couldn't mm. be more excited. And I'll say it once and I'll say it again. Super Bowl is a day for amateurs. Super Bowl is where everybody packs Las Vegas. Everybody has parties. Frito-Lay sells more chips than they've ever sold. Uh, Picante sells more salsa than they've ever sold. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings sells more chicken wings. And uh, people just have a fucking party. It's just one big fucking party, Steve. But it's a day It's a day to smoke marijuana. It's a day to hang out, embrace <laughs> your friends. It's a day to watch the games. But for a gay, guy like Steve Stevens, guy that bets big and lives larger, mm-hmm. it's a day for amateurs. Yeah. It's a day mom and pop bets, grandma, grandpa, the car washer, everybody, the detailer, everybody the secretary, yeah, everyone uh, everybody you could possibly think of from 
uh, 14-year-old kids that aren't old enough to bet mm -hmm. to a 90-year-old guy on oxygen walking in the casino to get his bet off. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. So Super Bowl is a great weekend for us. Why? Because everybody comes in, everybody gets excited, everybody calls us for the Super Bowl play, and we ended up making them 10 times the money on basketball, right? Correct. That brings us to my segment in college basketball, Skipper. Why don't you start us off big time and tell me what's going on in college hoops. Big 12 matchup, Kansas, number two Kansas, defeats, uh, I'm sorry, number three Kansas, defeats number two Baylor last night. That was a hell of a game. I watched that game. 73-68, skipped that game, yeah. could have went either way. Kansas. Both plays with enthusiasm. Both were playing with heart. Mm -hmm. Both were giving it everything they got, jumping in and bounds, saving balls. I like that type of basketball. Uh, Kansas was down at halftime. They fought back. They were at home where they never lose. And uh, they fought back and won the game 73-68. to But guess what? They were laying six and a half. So guess what they didn't do again, Steve? They didn't cover they, the spread. They didn't cover. Skip told you many times a couple big teams that don't cover the spread, they're one of them. Okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, as a matter of... <coughs> you okay? Of course, I'm always going to be okay. As a matter of fact, they're 7-13 and 13 against the spread, Steve. Horrible. They might be the number two or number three team in the country. However, you do not get paid on this team. Against the spread, they're what we call El Garbaggio. Garbaggio, trash, El Shitso. Team, you don't bet with your hard-earned money. So I will tell you something about Kansas. So Talk to me. I'll tell you a little secret in case you're not paying attention. Seven straight unders in Kansas games, Steve. Yeah, I've noticed that, Skipper. Seven straight unders. <laughs> I have. They're playing some defense. Uh, they're not scoring, except for uh, freshman Josh Jackson last night. He went crazy, 23 points. And uh, number three, Jayhawks kept the Baylor uh, Bears winless at Allen Fieldhouse. Baylor does not win in Kansas. Nobody does, as a matter of fact. Knock it off the number two Bears. Uh, Kansas got sole possession in the Big 12 last night uh, after that big win. But again, they did not cover. And another Kansas game stayed under the total. That makes seven straight unders in Kansas games now. Well, Skip, if you know what you're doing with sports betting, and, and, you're I, and, and, we, do. and we do, and you're looking yeah. at the line, and you're seeing that a favorite team is not covering the spread, mm -hmm. what does that mean? They're not living up to their potential. They're not scoring as many points as you thought they were against this team. They're not crushing the team. They might be winning. They're, however, they're not winning by what the number should be. In other words, uh, when you put a handicap number on the game, what they should actually win by they're not winning by that. Which makes a lot of sense on why, if they're not covering the spread, they're not demolishing teams, they're not crushing them, right. they're not scoring against their opponents, makes a lot of sense why it's going what? Under. Under. Yeah, they're playing a lot of D, that's for sure. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there's a, a, a lot of people that are uh, looking to get right back after some bullshit. Like, for instance, uh, Arizona State in Oregon. Mm -hmm. You got uh, Arizona State tonight, I think, going off at 10, plus 17 against Oregon. Uh, Oregon uh, came off a 17-game winning streak that got snapped on Saturday. So yep. they're looking to get right back on track against Arizona State tonight. Oregon We're, was very suspect in the beginning of the season. But, then, then they got red hot. Correct. And uh, now they, stopped, they, they just snapped their win streak. So. But then you come back and give them a 17-point favorite against I, I, Arizona State. I, I, so an Another interesting game. Arizona, correct. Arizona State's horrible. That, that's all I'm saying, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. So and, and like you said, Kansas freshman Josh Jackson, who scored 23, he's literally been kicking ass and taking fucking names. Mm -hmm. Uh, this week, Gonzaga earned its uh, number one ranking. Second time for Gonzaga in school history, Steve. Yeah, uh, and sits alone as the only unbeaten uh, college basketball team, that Skip. That is correct, Gonzaga. I said they were the best team west of the Mississippi. But the, you didn't think they were the best in the whole fucking country, huh? In the beginning of the season, I said I think they're the best team west of the Mississippi. Right. Uh, However, they could very easily be the best team in the country right now and sitting there undefeated, as you mentioned. Following the Bulldogs are Baylor, Kansas, Villanova, and Arizona just to round off the top five, Skipper. Yeah, but uh, again, if you talk about those top five teams, the only team that really covers in the top five is Gonzaga. I was just going to tell you, against the spread, these motherfuckers are El Scorcho, yep. like my games. Yep. Gonzaga's 15-4 and four against the spread, 8-3 mm -hmm. and three at home, 7-1 and one on the road. What else do you want, ladies and gentlemen? What, in a sports betting world, what else do you want? That's having your cake and eating it, too. Well, what I've always said, it doesn't matter what sport it is, Steve. You must, in order to be a great team, you must win on the road... And when you're winning and covering on the road... You're a bad motherfucker. You're a bad motherfucker. You're a finely yeah. tuned machine, and you're a fucking force to be reckoned with, that's for sure. And it's a team you watch very, very closely. Those are teams that can make you fucking rich. And Gonzaga, not only are they winning, but but as you just said, uh, they're covering on the road. Seven and one on the road against the spread. That's a solid team. Speaking of that, a surprise team has entered the fucking arena here, Skip, and they are covering games big time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. <laughs> Northwestern, North, Northwestern 
enters the poll at number 25. Mm -hmm. The Wildcats have won six straight games and sit at 18 and four. Yep. They replace Xavier, uh, which has lost four of its last six games. Uh, their time in the top 25 might be short, uh, may be short-lived, but they, uh, you know, it's part of college basketball, isn't it? Yes, it is. On Wednesday night to Purdue, uh, they lost big Wednesday night, Purdue, 80 to 59. Not good. No, not good at all. What are you thinking about that? I think they got smoked. <laughs> is it a team that maybe shouldn't have been 25th, or is it a team well, that just got the ranking and you knew it wouldn't last? Actually, Northwestern is a solid team. Uh, here's another team that covers on the road. They're 6-1-1 one, one on the road against the spread. Eight games on the road, they've covered six. Hmm. Uh, that's pretty good. Against the spread, they're 14-4-1 overall against the spread. However, when I look at a team and I see them winning on the road, Steve, and I see them covering games on the road, correct? that's a team I keep both my eyes on. And see, guys, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we try to tell you here. Our job isn't to be ESPN analysts. We're not going to give you every game and go over. We want to show you the, guy, the, the, the games to keep your eye on, games that you can profit from. I'm not here to be your best friend and sing mm -hmm. you a fucking good night story. I'm here to make you money, bottom <laughs> fucking line. Okay? I'm not here to cush you to good night, make you feel good, or drive in your car and hear stats. I'm here to make you money, bottom fucking line. If I stress you out doing it, too fucking bad. Speaking but, of another team in the, in the top five, my Villanova team from Philly. Uh-huh. Uh, they beat Providence last night 67 to 50. Uh, I'm sorry, 66 to 57. Uh, but guess what they didn't do? What? They didn't cover. Cover the spread. They win by nine. They're laying nine and a half. Not enough. I, it's never enough. You not, can ask the <laughs> not you enough. can ask the women that. It's never enough. It's <laughs> never enough. Villanova 11 and 10 overall against the numbers. So they're... Villanova's a 50-50 team. Some games they cover, some games they don't. Uh, it's a crapshoot with this team on whether they're going to cover the number or not. So stay away from them. North Carolina's 14-4-1 against the spread. 8-3 and three at home. 6-1-1 uh, one and one on the road. So, well, you know, North Carolina's a team that you've got to be looking to put some money on here and there too, right? That's Northwestern. North Carolina's 10 and 3 at home. Right, correct. Sorry. 10 and 3 against the spread North Carolina. 10 and 3 at home and 1 8 and 1 on go. the road. They're the fucking so team. So this was that don't the worst the fucking team in the world on the road, but at home is a beast. Yeah. So you might want to watch your stats. Hey, this team gets killed on the road, but they win at home. Now that's important what we just mentioned. If you're not paying attention out there, this is why it's you a hire. very big, very thing to pay attention. This very why, big to pay attention. This to. is why you're high enter, This is why you hire us, okay? North Carolina Tar Heels. Bet them at home. They're ten and three against the spread at home, as Steve just mentioned. One eight and one on the fucking They've road. They've only covered can't one, win to save their life. They've only covered one game all year on the road. Now that's a team that you want to keep both your eyes on for a different kind of reason. Okay, I got my eyes on Gonzaga. I got my eyes on Northwestern, <laughs> and I got my eyes on North Carolina for a different reason. Because when they go on the road, <laughs> shit ski. No, you're not going to get the money on them on the road. <laughs> Very true. Okay. Like I said, you got a lot of marquee matchups playing today alone, Skip. Northeastern, William Mary, Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, Florida. Uh, do you know that Missouri has lost 30 consecutive road games on the fucking road? Uh, I know they're really fucking bad. I think they might have had a uh, neutral mm -hmm. uh, circumstance where they played in a tournament on a neutral area. Yeah, it yeah. was, And they were considered the home team, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they beat Tulane. And, and they actually won. They beat Tulane. Yeah, and one of the early uh, non-conference tournaments earlier. Correct, yeah. but that still was considered a home game. On the road, Missouri's lost 30 consecutive games on the road. That's unbelievable. Here they are uh, on the road, Missouri against Florida. Mm. Won't say nothing else. You got college. Missouri's lost 12 or 13 games in a row, if I'm not mistaken. They're, they're horrible. What I'm saying is you got a lot of games, but there's only certain games that we match up on. That's why we're not going to go over them all. Mm. You got Arizona playing Oregon State. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, Skip, Arizona, uh, 10 in a row in the, in the fucking Pac-12 play, bro. That's pretty good. Uh, well, when you win 10 in a row in anything, especially in Pac-12 play. Speaking of the Pac-12, let me get into that in just a minute. Let Were you going to talk about your stomach? No. Speaking stomach. of the 12 Pac-12. Play, oh, 12 Pac. Oh, the, fuck. The Pac-12. Pac-12, baby. <laughs> Speaking of Skip's Pac-12, talk I, to him, Skip. I, I don't have a... <laughs> I don't got a... <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got a... You got a 12-pack, huh? No, I got the whole motherfucking case. But you know what? I ain't got a six pack. I got a 24 pack. But you know what? You make a lot of people a lot of money oh, and you, 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 you right work for the number one team in the world. So as far as college basketball is concerned, some marquee matchups today. A lot of stuff going into the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing things very, very clearly right now. Like I said, well, I'm making just, more money. You just smoked the fattest fucking joint I've ever seen. That, of, of course you're seeing things clearly. Are you ready for an infomercial? Do Ooh. you want to go on the winning ways? Do you want to go over and beyond what you ever thought was possible? Do you want to achieve greatness? Go to VIPSportsLasVegas.com. I got my hand reached out. All you got to do is grab it 
and I'll bring you to the top. Mm. I'm on top of the mountain looking down. Don't you think there comes a time where you deserve to shine? Sounds to me like you've been losing for so long, you forgot what it's like to win. The pendulum always swings back. It's your time to shine, and you know it is. Fair enough. Fair enough. VIPSportsLasVegas.com. Anyway, let's move on to the NFL and some Super Bowl talk. What do you think? Can, can, you want me, can I do the promo right now since it involves college basketball real quick? Go ahead. Do the college basketball, and let's get into the Super Bowl. Be, before we move out of the college basketball segment... And Did, before I die from smoking a fucking yeah. quarter? You catch your breath over there, and uh, let me do the... Uh, I Kush the, took I, my breath away. I'm, I'm going to run the... <laughs> I, I'm going to tell him about the promotion. Steve, Steve, okay? I make G's when I'm sleeping. <laughs> huh? And Steve. by the way, everybody that loves that song coming out, I appreciate it. Everybody wonders where the lyrics... That's called Hearing Things. That's part two to Money Talks, mm -hmm. as Money Talks. And be looking for the new song, New Jack Hustler. I'm Which I'm gonna no no hustlers hustler bookie it. killer my money's long now I'm legit but I used to get my money wrong I heard it Jack fools to get guap <laughs> last thing I sweat some sucker punk cop oh. ride like a boss when I'm in the ghost you run up on it bang another hate of smoke came from the bottom and found a way out betting sports ain't never gonna play out. Mm. 10 grand to lose, 20 to gain. Mm. In my brain, my game's stronger than cocaine. Gotta get paid tonight, you motherfucking right. Play with my money, you're playing with your motherfucking life. Nice! White, rich, and hard, new reality star. At 19, I had a $100,000 car. Mm. Fuck your bookie, I'm taking them all down. Kiss my ass, twist the cap off the crown. Mm. Cause I ain't trying to take no shorts. Damn. I'm CEO of VIP Sports. Nice! And I'm a hustler, motherfucker. <laughs> Shout out to Ice-T and everybody else. Just a new small one coming your way. But Skipper, run the college ad and tell them how they can get paid. A little rhyme there from Steve Stevens. That was nice. Tell them how to get paid. That was nice. Speaking of the Pac-12, okay, <coughs> I'm going to get into that in just a second. If you're listening to these podcasts and you're not calling us, shame on you. You absolutely you, hate money. And don't know how to read between the lines. If you don't call us, you hate money. Last week, I told you to call in for the ACC game of the year. Winner, Duke and Wake Forest, over the total, winner. The day before that, I told you we had the NBA game of the month, the single largest wager we were going to make in the NBA the entire month of January. Guess what happened last Friday night? The Toronto Raptors lay in six. They beat the Milwaukee Bucks <laughs> by 18 points. Absolute blowout winner. If you didn't call for the NBA game of the month last Friday, shame on you. If you didn't call me for the ACC game of the year last Saturday, the Duke game going over the total, shame on you. I'm going to give you another opportunity right now to get up off your ass, pick up the phone, give me a call at 877-220-6540, start being proactive. You've got to take some initiative. This week, guess what goes down? Tomorrow night, Friday night, he's got his NBA Dog of the Week. He's releasing a dog play. And people say, you know what? Steve, you don't play dogs. You pick a lot of favorites. Oh, we play dogs. <coughs> we do play dogs. Got to pay to play. And, and guess what? I don't know who let the dogs out, but tomorrow night, Friday night in the NBA, his NBA dog of the week is the single largest dog wager we'll make in the NBA all week. Goes Friday night. Take that game, roll it up into Saturday, because this Saturday he has spotted a Pac-12 game that will be the single largest wager that we make on a Pac-12 conference game this entire season. It's our Pac-12 conference game of the year this Saturday. That game will win, trust me. So get the NBA dog of the week this Friday, get the Pac-12 game of the year on Saturday, and it couldn't be a better time because you'll pad your bankroll for Super Bowl Sunday. And if you call me now at 877-220-6540, I'll give you the whole weekend for $100. The whole Super Bowl weekend <laughs> for $100. The game on Friday, the dog of the week, <coughs> the Pac-12 game of the year on Saturday, and I'll give you Steve's opinion on Super Bowl Sunday, $100 for the entire weekend. If you don't call, stop listening to me. That's a fact, because ladies and gentlemen, Skip has authorization to give away the store this week. You know why? I have about... 45 clients in town right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have millions of dollars wagered pretty much every day of the week. I'm leaving the podcast to go meet a client of mine who's in town with a half a million dollars. I uh, want to give a shout out to Slick Rick. I don't know whose runner was running faster, uh, Forrest Gump or your runner. <laughs> shout out to the bodybuilder for having an absolute road rage, uh, or should I say a roid rage, uh, when it came down to paying that 100000 mm -hmm. uh, Guy was the biggest guy in the world. You thought he was calm until you told him that 100000 needed to get paid. Ooh. 
turned into a little fucking roid rage, huh? Wow. But he paid it, and you made another 200000 Like I said, let us do our job. Takes money to make money. Anyway, let's move into some NFL and Super Bowl talk. Fair enough? Fair enough. Roger did that. Fuck, man. What is going on with the Raiders situation here in Las Vegas? It's not good. It's right now, it really isn't good, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the one that keeps it real and have told you from the beginning. Um, even though we don't know the insights of what's going on still because they might have the money, Roger Goodell hasn't attended a game uh, 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 in Foxborough, it says here, Foxborough. since Brady's suspension. Yeah. But, I mean, what, what do you think about this whole situation, bro? It's just, like, confusing. Well, Roger Goodell was asked if his relationship with the Patriots organization and its fans was uh, awkward. And he said, no, it's not awkward. Uh, yes, it is. When asked about the war between the league and the Patriots fan, Roger Goodell said, it's perfectly okay for Patriots fans to be pissed off at me. He said miffed. Uh, and there's nothing awkward between me and Brady or me and Belichick or me and Robert Kraft or anyone else with the Patriots for that matter. Uh, is Goodell full of shit? Uh, yeah, he's full of shit. Big time, without any yeah. shadow of a doubt. And he hasn't attended a game at Foxborough since Brady's suspension. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's absolutely full of shit. Yeah, there's a big beef there, and there probably should be uh, with the suspension of Brady. And uh, you, we all know everything that went down in the inflate game. Correct. It's, it's a boring topic. It's a boring subject, Steve. Uh, the bottom line is, if and when the Patriots do win the Super Bowl, Roger Goodell's going to have to be up on the podium with Robert Kraft, Bilicek, Brady... It could be a little awkward for those guys. Without any shadow of a doubt. And sorry for getting... I, I don't think the Patriots guys give a fuck. Don't, don't kick his ass and fucking right off the stage. They don't give a dog fuck. Throw don't, snowballs at him and drop a couple lines and call him a bitch. Yeah, they'll take the trophy. Bitch! They'll take the trophy and just push... Shove him. it right up his ass. Yeah, push him off the stage. You yeah, know, they get, don't... Get the fuck out of here. I don't think it's going to affect the fucking Patriots at all. It won't at all. And sorry for going coming right out of the Raider thing and getting into that. It's just... Mm -hmm. It's so confusing, and there's so much to talk about. There's no sense of really getting into it. But just understand this. It's very shady right now about Vegas Raiders. Well, Sheldon Adelson, uh, who is a billionaire, who owns the you know, Sands Corporation and, and the Palazzo and the Venetian here in town, yeah, he's pulled, he's pulled his money out. Steve. That's a fact. Another good, yeah, he has. So, like I said, that's, that's just, just understand that. It's a little shaky right now, and something that was guaranteed is not guaranteed as of this second. I'm completely... Uh, have faith and know that they will work it out and we will come up with a deal and they still will come to Las Vegas. But it is a real shaky deal right now and that's no bullshit. But the other thing I was laughing about is, uh, you know, Dan Patrick, we, we love watching the show. Good dude, funny as a motherfucker. Uh, you know, I claim to be the 50 cent of uh, Dan. I'm never going to cuss and we're never going to give stats and have researchers and be nice guys. Mm -hmm. We're always going to cuss, talk shit. It's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You like us, you like us. If you don't, eat a dick. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> but at the end of the day, Dan Patrick said it shows a ceremony uh, with Goodell up there uh, during a Super Bowl ceremony was Patrick was announcing. Mm -hmm. And he was talking to Goodell, right? And uh, he was uh, announcing the thing, and, and Goodell went to take the mic from Patrick, and Patrick wouldn't give it up. It showed it on his show the other day. So they were going back and forth. Dan took the mic back and didn't let him talk. Because he was, you know, announcing the game, doing his job, mm -hmm. making sure he was fair, got both sides. Didn't really want to hear what Roger had to say. Well, nobody does. And so Dan's yeah. like, the reason why the motherfucker don't want to show up there is because of me. Yeah, of course. But, uh, yeah, so there's a few reasons. But, Goodell, you make too much money. You're a fucking idiot. And uh, I think they need to figure somebody else out uh, for that position. What do you think? Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say about that? Not really. Super Bowl talk, Skip. What's got you excited? What's going on? What's on your mind? Who are you taking, Skip? Uh, we can't talk. We can't disclose that. Oh, we can't? No. So if I told you I was, the whole world was on Atlanta and I was pounding the Patriots, we wouldn't be able to well, say we, nothing about it? Well, or? we already know that your preseason sleeper was Atlanta. Uh -huh. uh, they were big odds. Uh, as a matter of fact... And if you knew that you were picking up 900000 somehow if Atlanta mm -hmm. won that game, yeah. wouldn't maybe you put 500000 on the Patriots? Well, I'm not going to disclose what we're doing. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, if you want to know, give us a call. I'm not going to just spit it out there. Okay. I'm telling you like this. I wanted to talk a little Super Bowl with you. Like I said, Atlanta's fucking stocky. They got great receivers. Uh, Ryan's getting the fucking job done out there. On the other side, you got the pimp of the year, Tom Brady. Solid team. Uh, are they the best all-around team? No. Are they the finely tuned machine? Yes. Have they been in this position before? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do they have heart? Yes. Does Atlanta? Yes. It's going to be a great marquee matchup, Skip. I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, without, uh, it's the highest total uh, in history. Uh, sitting right at almost 60, uh, if I'm not mistaken. 50. Well, the, the, New England's minus three. The total was 59. Uh -huh. They took a huge bet, Steve, on the under, as you know. Um, the South Point Casino in town here, who is known to take some very large bets, uh, the sportsbook director 
came out yesterday and said, we took a very large five-figure wager, just under six figures, on the under from a known wise guy in town here uh -huh. uh, on the under. So the line went from 59 uh -huh. uh, down to 58 after that wager. I saw it. Yeah. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yeah, yeah. be careful for traps. Yeah. Sometimes you have to give a little to gain a lot. Yeah, be careful. Would it's, you give up a half a mil to make 10 mil? Yeah, it's called pirating games. It so. sure as fuck is. Drop the line at yeah. a full America and then get the best line possible and whack it for fucking four or five mil. Yeah, so be careful. Anyway, back to Super Bowl talk. Jim Harbaugh says Tom Brady is not only the best quarterback ever, he's also the best football player ever. Your thoughts? Well, I think Jim Harbaugh's got a Michigan bias. I mean, he's a Michigan guy. He's, he's a, not even a top 10 guy to be talking. Uh, I, I mean, listen, Brady, I mean, Tom Brady. I like him. Best quarterback ever. It, it's, I'm talking about yeah, Harbaugh. Yeah, I, I'd say, I'm going to, listen, I'm not a Brady fan. I know you're not. That's why, I, what, I, what's your thoughts? He so, says that sorry. he's not only the best quarterback, but the best football player ever. Uh, I, I'm gonna, Is that up for argumentation, yes or no? It, listen, you can't say one guy's the best football player ever. There's a Love lot, your answer. There's a lot of good guys out there. Man. I'd have to say there's to a... To say that one guy was the best ever, I'm not going to go there. Okay, no. but you know what? Uh, best, best quarterback ever? I'm going to have to put him in the yes category there. He wins the Super Bowl, he passes Joe Montana, and he's up there by himself. Well, he's the San Mateo kid from California. Just telling you. The 199th pick overall sixth, yeah. in the sixth round. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he's done pretty well for himself. Now he's sitting on top of the mountain, fucking the finest woman in the world, sitting on mm. yachts, getting his balls fucking twiggled. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just living a life. Hey, congratulations. He's a beast, man. Yeah, good guy. Matt, but I, Matt Ryan, on the other hand, is from uh, my neighborhood. He's from Exton, Pennsylvania. Tough guy. He's a PA boy. Went to a uh, good Irish kid. Went, I was just going to say tough, went, redneck. He went to Boston College. You know, dork. There's got to be a lot of people up in Boston that are pulling for Matt Ryan. He I'm was, sure there is. He's he a nerd. A, he's a dork. He was a star quarterback in, uh, at Boston College. He's made it this far. He's an absolute super stud. Here's a guy I want to say he's played great. He's kicked ass all year long. The Atlanta Falcons, shout out to you and your organization for making it to the Super Bowl. The dirty fucking birds mm -hmm. go against the superstar Patriots. Yep. I love it, man. It's going to be a marquee matchup. On the other hand, Matt Ryan was the third overall pick in 2008. I mean, you got a guy that was picked number three. I guess a guy that was picked 199th. How guess that, what? How, they're how, how did that work out for you? And how did it work out to where they're both there? Whew. So uh, somebody was right uh, on both ends for damn sure. All right, let's keep moving. Well, I want to talk about some illegal gambling, which is the whole reason why we do our sports podcast, to make mm. it legal here in the States so we can keep the money. I'm tired of sending $5 billion fucking dollars to Costa Rica and Belize when it could stay right here. I know in the United States... Man, and as it fucked up as it looks, it seems like Trump's setting it up to where it stays only legal in Vegas. No, I, dis and then I disagree with you and Jim Stevens. Uh -huh. well, yeah, I mean, you see who we just picked for the Supreme Court? It's moving. We the, don't, guy, the guy's pro-fucking sports betting. We don't listen. It, it came down to two guys. Understand so, this, Jim Steve. You want to hear me out for a second? I do, but I just want to say one thing. Jim Steve, understand this. Sports betting online will never go nowhere. We'll always be able to do it. It's the American way. It's our fucking stall until they make sports betting legal in more places because it's such a big entity. Go ahead, Skip. Okay, well, uh, Trump just picked who he wants for the, uh, the uh, Supreme Court to fill fucking... Uh, We're going to do a two-hour podcast? But I, I want to hear this. I, I don't know. You were rambling. No, I love it. Come you, on. You've been rambling on. for fucking 40 minutes. I, I'm just, Hour and a half, probably. You, you asked me about Trump and fucking illegalizing gambling. What do you think? I think the guy he just picked for Supreme Court is fucking pro-sports betting. It's, it's a known fact. It came down to between two guys, uh, the Hardeman guy and the Gorish guy that he picked, okay? The Hardeman guy was against sports betting. He's got a track record, a track record of being against sports betting, okay? The guy, and he didn't pick him. The guy he did pick has uh, known, he's known to be pro sports betting, just for the record. So just so you guys understand that, we want that money. We're not fucking stupid. Americans want it. And Americans are betting offshore no matter what. They're not going to stop. Americans aren't going to stop just like they didn't stop smoking cigarettes. They didn't stop uh, alcohol during the prohibition. They didn't stop, they didn't stop smoking marijuana. And now everything's legal. Sports betting is going to become legal. You're out of your fucking mind if you think they're going to cut off all offshore gambling and make it where people can't bet. Mm -hmm. It's going to be legal here. It's going to be offshore. I'm just mad about this stat right here. According to the American Gaming Association, Americans will bet an estimated $4.7 billion in total wagers on the Super Bowl between New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. That's a lot of money. The estimated number is up 11% mm -hmm. from last year, Skip. Wow. Denver and Carolina was a pretty big bet Super Bowl, brother. Up 11 from that? Mm -hmm. What do you think the amount out of $4.7 billion dollars how much money, ladies and gentlemen, do you guys think is betting legal in Las Vegas? Well, I read the article. It was like 130 or 140 million or something. So there's four, almost $5 billion being bet 
on the Super Bowl and only 132 million being bet legally in the United States of America. Yeah, here in the, in the state of Nevada. Which means we're sending $4.5 billion out of the country. If you guys don't make this shit legal or, and build schools and cut our taxes, you're the dumbest motherfuckers in the world. Or with illegal bookmakers in the United States. Illegal bookmakers. Right. The, uh, majority, the majority of that money is going through offshore sports books. Uh, Four billion at least. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So, like I said, make sports betting legal. Come up with acts, petitions, sign them, support it, and let's make it legal. That way they can cut our taxes a little bit, build the schools, and have people that are betting able to do it the right way, legal, and not be looking over their shoulder. Fair right. enough? Fair enough. Let's jump down to the LeBron James. <coughs> Le LeBron James fires back at Charles Barkley. And he should. I love it. Saying, I've had enough of your shit, Charles. Fuck you. Uh, this is a big feud, Steve. I actually absolutely love it. LeBron James fires back on Charles, says, tired of your old bullshit. You don't mean nothing. Well, first of all, let me back it up to what Charles Barkley was saying. Are you even familiar with it? Yeah. Watching it lately, he says he's... Uh, uh, inappropriate, he's whiny, all of the above. Le like, he just doesn't like LeBron at all. Uh, Barkley said uh, of James last week, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they've given him everything he wanted. Uh, they have him as the highest paid payroll guy in NBA history. The Cavaliers have the highest payroll in history. Correct, and he's the highest paid player in history as well. Yeah, it, it, I mean, Cavaliers... Uh, they spend a lot of fucking money. Yeah, well, he's made more than Jordan. The he's made more than... Uh, they got the highest payroll in basketball, period. And he's the highest player in NBA history as well. And he'll probably make a billion dollars just in his sport. How fucking crazy is that? That's good. He wanted J.R. Uh, Smith last summer. Uh, they paid him. Uh, you know, he wanted Shumpert last summer. Uh, they bought him. Uh, Kyle Korver. I mean, it goes on and on and on. He said he's the best player in the world. Does he want all the good players too? Like, you know... Charles is constantly talking shit like, you're the best player. Why do you constantly whine? Why do you constantly, you, you ask for these players, you end up getting them. Mm -hmm. uh, don't you want to compete a little bit? Don't you want to be the defending champions and actually have to earn the championship? What do you, I mean? You well, know. LeBron's fucking response to this was, screw Charles Barkley. Uh, Charles is a hater. Uh, I'm not going to let him disrespect my legacy like this anymore. I love it. I'm not the one... Who, now, now, here's the important You got to let me, I love this. I was going to read this. I love this. I'm not the one who threw somebody through a window. Yeah. In Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, at a nightclub. I know all about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one that spit on a kid. Uh-huh, which he did. Uh, I never had unpaid debts in Las Vegas. Uh, which was on the news literally every night for about four months straight. Well, Charles Barkley owes millions. Well, we know all about that. Yeah, just like we uh, know when Danny Mason, RIP, not, put us with him to bet sports, and uh, he told us he knew more than us. Yeah. Charles let's, Barkley, let's, you're let's, broke. Yeah. We take sports books down. You owe them. I got to be very careful what I talk about. I know, I, me too. I, I've had a relationship with Charles Barkley. Uh, I know all about his gambling. Uh, so do I. Uh, he's, he's terrible. He's a good dude. Uh, Great person, uh, he's but a, thinks he knows everything about everything, and yeah. he bets it on his own, don't need help. Let me just go ahead and say, Charles, you're fucking out of line right here. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. I love Charles Barkley. I've known him. Uh, I got, I, I, I've been in that circle before. He's a known gambler here in Las Vegas. And uh, listen, I don't want to say too much bad about Chuck because I love the round, the mound round. You don't go talking about LeBron James as a guy that's done, you know, you yeah. have to comp compare LeBron James to a Michael Jordan or a Tiger Woods. He's done something for NBA and basketball mm -hmm. that no one else could. Yeah. So watch your motherfucking mouth when yeah. you talk about he whines, he gets what he wants, uh, he doesn't want to compete, he's an amazing player. Uh, fuck that. Watch your fucking mouth. LeBron says he's a hater, mm -hmm. uh, and I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you got to check yourself, Barkley. I mean, uh, I'm on LeBron's side here. Me too. Uh, like I said, I didn't like LeBron's dancing when he first came into the league. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to wear the tight clothes and bond with that generation. So I can understand Charles a little bit and the busting balls. But you do not talk down. You don't talk. You don't talk down to the kingpin of the fucking industry. Yeah. That you're talking to LeBron King fucking James, a guy that's done more for the industry than you ever will. A guy that's became a road model. Guy that's been married from the beginning. Has kids who are about to be in the NBA. Versus Charles, you ain't done shit. Sit the fat. You know, sit back. Shut the fuck up. The round mound, the rebound. You're out of line here, my friend. And uh, I'm a huge fan of yours, Charles. But you're out of line in this in this instance. That's, want, that's Skipper's opinion. Why don't we get back into the news? As you know, Derek Fisher and Matt Barnes have been topic of our conversation a few different times. Yes, they have. Some of our funniest podcasts I remember, you know, <laughs> announcing with you is when we're talking about these two guys right here. Two of our favorite guys, Matt Barnes, Derek Fisher. And guess what? They're back in the news, Big Skipper. Mm -hmm. Derek Fisher had $300,000 worth of jewelry stolen from his L.A. home, uh, including 
his five championship rings. That sucks. Law enforcement sources tell, the, tell us that the NBA legend reported a burglary at his home Monday morning. Mm. Telling police uh, he left the home at about 7.30 a.m. When he returned three hours later, it had cleared someone had been on the inside of his house. That blows, man. Come to find out that $300,000 of jewelry was stolen and all five of his championship ring. That sucks, man. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you're fucking everyone's wife in the neighborhood. Mm. We've already told you. Derek's fucking everybody. Mm. That's what you get for fucking people's wives, Derek. Ding dong, Derek. Sooner or later, when you're out, listen, you're taking your nightly run. Like, in other words, your girlfriend's at the house. You take your morning run out there on the Sunset Strip to go to fuck someone else, thinking you don't know no better. Someone comes right in your house, takes robs you for your jewelry, takes your fucking rings, mm. and uh, I guess that's the price of puss, huh, Derek? I suppose. What did Matt Barnes do? Uh, well, I don't know. You tell me. Sacramento Kings forward Matt Barnes surrendered and was uh, later released by New York City Police Wednesday, uh, stemming from an incident in a nightclub in December. Uh, so, so uh, another little scuffle, Skipper. Yeah. And it's, it's always women around with Matt Barnes. This, kid, this guy gets in his feelings way too much over bitches. Uh-huh. That's the difference. Like, uh, Derek Fisher don't give a fuck. He's just fucking your wife. Uh-huh. Poor dude was just trying to bust a nut. Fucked the wrong dude's wife. Got robbed for his jewelry. Matt Barnes is over here like... Elbowing bitches and... Yeah, not, uh, not cool. Let, you want to talk about the story a little bit or what? I don't know. Do you? Yeah. Barnes has been charged with third-degree assault, a misdemeanor, uh, after he was involved in an altercation uh, uh, at a bar. Avenue. A bar called Avenue. Yeah, Avenue Bar. In Chelsea, a section. In, in, New, York. in yeah. New York City. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. It's a little pop in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a related civil suit has also been filed against Barnes and teammate DeMarcus... Uh, cousins in a New York district court by two plaintiffs. Uh, somebody named... Uh, Jasmine Bessio and Myron Powell. There you go. So go ahead and talk about the lawsuit, what they allege. Well, the the a- lawsuit says that fucking Barnes grabbed Bessio, grabbed this chick by the neck. He started choking her out about 3 o'clock in the morning uh, after a fight broke out in the VIP section of the club, Steve. Uh, apparently, co- uh, Cousins, his buddy, is alleged to have punched Powell in the face after he came over and was trying to help the chick. And uh, Barnes is alleged to have elbowed the chick in the face and uh, knocked her unconscious. Yeah, so basically breaking up a fight, knock a bitch out, whatever. Whatever the case is, here's the bottom line. Well, he elbowed the chick in the face, allegedly, and then uh, the dude came over and tried to help the chick. And then uh, apparently Cousins allegedly punched the dude in the fucking face Uh and said, mind your own fucking business. Correct. And uh, Which was some G shit. And Cousins was later cleared of any wrongdoing and will not face any charges according to the NYPD. So Correct, but do me a favor, Barnes. Keep keep your homeboys and your players and your friends out of your little bullshit with your bitches. Uh, you obviously have feelings for these girls. Uh, y- you can't love them, homie. Uh, you can't make a hoe into a housewife. You got to have a motto. <laughs> don't love them, don't need them, don't want them, won't feed them. Boss the fuck up a little bit. You're square as a box. From a guy that's from the streets and thugged out, how do you have these feelings for these women, man? Do your thing, relax. Smoke some Kush, play NBA, be glad you got paid, and gladly fade away into the sunset because we're tired of talking about you. And if you don't learn any lessons at all from this podcast... Yeah, and if you learn, didn't learn, learn from learn, learn Derek this. Fisher fucking your bitch... Learn this. Hashtag. Hoes don't make housewives. You're goddamn right. You can't make a hoe a housewife, my friend. <laughs> and that's what you need to understand. Have fun with these women. Fuck them. But you don't need to handcuff them and love them. Mm. They're fucking other people. Embrace it. Oh, You're not God. the only NBA, NBA mm. dick they want. Shame on you. Trade that thing in. You're like- nothing but a stepping stone to the bigger cock and the bigger payroll. Oh, God. You've always known that. Mm. God. Trade that shit in like a wash rack. If you're at a club and a woman wants to fuck you, embrace it. Take it for who you are. You're not good looking. Your money's not outrageous. Take the pussy, enjoy it, and hashtag stop handcuffing hoes and stop having feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of marijuana, Skip, former NFL, or should I say NBA player, I was thinking of my boy, another Jackson in an NFL that blows, which I don't want to put him on blast, mm-hmm. a Vegas boy. You might be able to figure it out, Steve Jackson. So former NBA player Steven Jackson says he used to smoke weed before games. No. What percentage of NBA players 90. do you think smoke before games? 90. I say about 50. You know why? 80% of the league smokes marijuana. There's about 20 that are square. But remember, you're on the road. So where are you going to smoke right before the game if you're on the bus or on your way over to a road game? I'm sure they got their supplier in every city. 
I mean, it's not about having your weed. You can have your weed in the bag. Mm -hmm. When you're with the team, you have to have team meetings. You have to go to dressing rooms. You're only high for an hour at a time. Listen, you want to find a way to fuck Answer the fucking question. You when you go to your fucking game on the road and you're on the road, where are you getting high at? <clears throat> Anywhere. I mean, step around the corner. So you're telling me in the locker room you're blazing up a blunt no one smells it, Skip? No, back in the hotel room before you get on the bus. Okay, so you're saying hours before the game. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I know they're all You're high. obviously not a marijuana guy. In order to be high during your game, mm -hmm. you got to have a home game. you got to be smoking, drive your car, smoke your blunt, mm -hmm. put it out, and be playing an hour later on the court. Well, that might explain why nobody's playing defense in the NBA. Well, it's re no, it's because they're burned out. Yeah. They smoke too early. Mm -hmm. You gotta allow these players to smoke 15 minutes before game time. Mm -hmm. I, everybody's smoking. So what I think you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, let the players, if, if marijuana's legal, let the players smoke pot 15 minutes before game time. We'll have a lot better NBA, a lot more excited. Rather than have them smoke, three hours before and have them burnt out. You know what I mean? Yeah, and if you want better Kush, give us a call so you can win some fucking games and take some money from your bookie, and then you can bet some better Kush. Get that Steve Stevens master closer Kush mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Absolutely. In entertainment news, uh, Beyonce uh, is set to have twins. Here's a story I'd like to say. Oh, uh, she's, she's scheduled to have twins, uh, but here's the thing. She also signed a contract to be the headliner at Coachella. Uh, which is the big music festival. Obviously, right. she's the big headliner. The whole reason why everybody's buying tickets and it's selling off the charts is because of Beyonce. Right. Now, when you buy a ticket to see Beyonce, are you looking to see her pregnant with twins moving around, or are you looking to see her shake her ass and tits and fucking do that thing? Uh, you probably want to see her shake her I'm ass. I'm looking for a good performance. Yeah. I'm looking for her to... I'm, I'm ready for... I, I want to see the jelly. <laughs> are, are you coming to see Beyonce's jelly? Or her ass that's smelly because she has twins in the oven. Ooh. Uh, that, yeah. That's a pretty Could you imagine the workup? You're talking about, you know, on a, on, a, on a, let's picture it. That's a pretty obvious question. Let's just picture it. Uh, uh, Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. Top racehorse. Runs around the track as hard as he can uh, as a single stud. No big deal. You put a baby in him. He runs around. He's working hard. The friction of his ass. He might have a foamed up <laughs> ass by the end of that race. Last thing people want to see Where, how the is... Fuck, how the fuck do you get that out of Beyonce and Coachella? I'm thinking of Beyonce pregnant, moving around, the friction of her ass. Oh, my God. And I actually see her ass foaming up. And I don't think anyone wants to go to Coachella and, and she, see Beyonce's, Beyonce's ass, ass foaming up like a no, racehorse no, after a Kentucky Derby win. Right. You know I don't, and I don't think anyone else. She signed the contract knowing she was pregnant. You're a liar, but I love your business. Absolutely. Go get that fucking money, you lying fucking thief bitch. I would too, wouldn't you? Well, Steve, you know what? <whistles> oh! What are, what, what's going on? It wouldn't, be a, it wouldn't be the end of the podcast if we wouldn't celebrate your birthday, guy. It ain't even my birthday today, oh boy. My birthday is tomorrow. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy yeah. birthday They got it pumped you. up. What's up, dude? That's nice, guys. What's up? Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to Oh, isn't that cute, guys? Am I supposed to blow it out or what? My, let me hey, see my... Hey, Yeah! Happy birthday, That's no big deal. Thanks, fellas. What's up, man? I didn't even, didn't even expect it. You know, the birthday's tomorrow, but, you know, something like... We, you got me a present, D? What'd you get me, buddy? What'd you get? Oh. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Thanks, pal. I appreciate it. Where did you find that gift from? Did you get that by yourself? You're a good dude. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks, fellas. Thanks. Hey, don't be bringing the rest of the crew in here. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate the love, man. Like I said, you guys are selling deals, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for the love, Skip. I knew you were playing something up your fucking sleeve well, when you, you were pausing. Happy birthday, brother. Now you can have your cake and eat it, too. I you love always it. said you don't want a piece of the pie. You want the whole fucking thing. So go ahead and join the whole motherfucker, Steve. Happy birthday. Steve usually gives a sign-off. Today, Big Skip's going to give a sign-off. This weekend, we got the Pac-12 game of the year. It's Super Bowl weekend, guys. If you don't pick up that phone and call us right now, you absolutely hate money, and I know you love making money. 877-220-6540. We got the NBA dog of the week this Friday. 
We got the Pac-12 game of the year this Saturday, and we got the Super Bowl this Sunday. $100 gets you the entire Super Bowl weekend. Give us a call right now. We're signing out. I got you. One more thing I'd like to say. Like he said, you've got to get wake up to get your cake up. Don't be sleeping <laughs> on this money, ladies and gentlemen. We're all about our cake, and at the end of the day, all we want to do is make you money. I just want to say... Uh, behalf of myself, well, I love you. I love my company. To all my boys, Skip, thanks again for the cake, man. I appreciate it. Happy you birthday. know we're a tight-knit firm over here, and uh, I love everything you guys do for me. That's why I love doing for you guys. But at the end of the day, you deserve to get paid. I said it before. I said it again. Super Bowl is a day for amateurs. Mom, Dad, you want to make some real money, call VIPSportsLasVegas.com. If you're in town for the Super Bowl, let me make you some money. Let me hit you 80%. And Skip, I'm going to do something that you didn't think that I was going to do uh, as well. Every now and then, you guys give me gifts. I give out gifts. I'm going to give out a gift for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about the underdog, the underdog. Everybody's happy with Atlanta. I've had Atlanta from day one. They paid me more money than I have ever fucking could imagine from an NFL team. They made me more money than anybody in the league. New England Patriots, uh, a solid team. They don't got grunk. They're not 110%. This game could go either fucking way. On the behalf of myself to you, because Super Bowl uh, is a game that I love to have fun with, and if I drop a half a mil, it'll just strictly be for advertising purposes anyway. From me to you, Steve Stevens is taking New England Patriots minus two and a half mm. to get the job done. Enjoy it. Take it. Do what you want. But more importantly, call my office because we got to play on that total. That's going to knock your socks off. And like I said, take advantage of Skip's promotion. See you. Wouldn't want to be you. VIP Sports Podcast. I love you. It's my birthday tomorrow. I'm going to go celebrate. My life is great. I love my family. I love my crew. And I love you too. See you. Wouldn't want to be you. And remember... If you don't have pictures of tickets on your website, you're not a real consultant. If you don't have pictures of you with clients in Las Vegas in a sports book, you're not a real consultant. If you don't have pictures of your clients and videos of your client talking about the winnings, you're not a sports consultant. If you're not licensed and bought in the state of Nevada, you're not a sports consultant. However, I am, and I want to fucking make you money. Love you. See you wouldn't want to. Never lose twice the money talks too much. I can't sleep at night. It's Steve Stevens, I bust your boogie head open Split it to the white meat, I ain't joking Me a dirt bomb in the ghost flow Straight OG like that kush I be smoking It's way too potent for rookies to come hit it A little white girl around, I might sniff it Popping bub in the club, so twisted. My pops keeps telling me to go get it. So I'm at the sports book, betting big on the Clippers. I'm talking about five figures. I need a few shots of liquor. Might need another zipper if the bomb play me. Fuck around and put a half a meal on Tom Brady. When it comes to vet sports, Steve Stevens a beast. Need a certified when it called VIP Sports. I got too many felonies to ride around with my Glock. So sure to keep it since I got shot in Vegas like Pop. Here